Hi everyone, welcome to Sunny Bitcoin. So today I sat down with Rahul, the current owner and CEO of Zepay. So Zepay is an Indian crypto exchange which I had co-founded in 2015 with Mahin and Saurav, and I had a fascinating conversation with uh, Rahul. Um, we discussed his experience uh, with Zepay so far. We also discussed his illustrious background in crypto, starting almost in 2010, 2011, his investments in Coinbase. his involvement with brave browser the basic attention token his uh, sunny bitcoin special announcement on nft related feature coming soon i really enjoyed this conversation for more reasons than one and i hope you do too rahul thank you so much for doing this i i know it's really late where you are in the us uh, but we have to coordinate this time because i'm in singapore i'm obviously super excited to have you uh so welcome to sunny bitcoin oh ditto well thanks for having me it's not it's not too late man we we can hang out you know until until you know until the next morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe the audience goes to sleep then um but but disclaimer uh, you know for those of uh, whom you don't know uh, i was the co-founder of zepay I'm I'm always confused. Am I supposed to say was like you know it, you it, were it, the CEO and do you use a present tense or a past yeah, tense as it, a founder? I, I guess <laughs> uh, you know you're you're always a co-founder, you know, in a sense, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, I know. So well, I'm using the past tense because just to kind of uh, indicate that I'm no longer involved in Zepay. Though though of course Zepay, you know, we were three co-founders and Zepay will always be our baby. and i will always wish that zepay continues to lead the crypto space in india like it's doing right now so my bias is my preferences are absolutely clear <laughs> out of all the crypto exchanges in india i love it yeah it, it, i say i say you gave birth to a zebra the 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 founder <laughs> that's terrible that's like the <laughs> i have a much more intelligent version of the name but okay you just killed it right there <laughs> um uh, so so rahul for you know many people of course know zepay and it's always it's almost been synonymous with bitcoin crypto in uh, india uh, but might not know you so tell us about your background and about your really long involvement in the crypto space even before you know even yeah. before me awesome yeah so so totally the, the i would say i kind of got into like a blockchain and crypto uh it, it honestly is weird in a sense before bitcoin is invented Um, I've been interested in digital currencies like for for a while, and uh, during the the two thousand eight financial crisis, I, I, I as an investor I was wondering you know what would happen with let's say global currencies over as as different you know money would 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 be invented and stuff like that. I, I really went back in history before Bitcoin is invented and said you know what how what is money how does it exist and um uh you know where is it going so you know back then you you'd look at let's say digital assets and um uh things like you know special drawing rights things like that and i thought about the idea of sovereign states and things uh, i didn't actually, i never actually read the book you know the, the sovereign individual but i heard that you know it kind of talks about that in that book and um i made going down this path uh in the end of 2000 you know 8 nine uh there's a company called Itex which was a a company that does barter and they do barter i didn't even, i didn't even, i don't think i've been told to this sunny like so they do barter and they they create their own currency like it is a digital currency called it's called an Itex dollar and what ended up happening is we end up investing in this company uh through it's a public company you can actually go see it and i kind of just kind of went down the rabbit hole like you know uh, um what is what is digital currency what's an Itex dollar and all this stuff. And that was kind of primer into like, you know, where is value created, you know, why does something have value and um uh could Itex print unlimited dollars and then kind of, you know, use it around. And their business model was they see barter exists, you know, globally and they would franchise these these like imagine little cities of places where you can create this Itex dollar. But the really cool thing about that is if you're in Singapore and I'm in let's say uh in London, you actually could, could you could actually convert the itex dollars It's a really interesting model um anyways long fast forward a couple of years later that was 2008 9 10 uh, i heard about the bitcoin white paper in 2011 right and um uh when i when i, when I read it i looked at this one this is really interesting i thought it was a pretty cool idea uh i read the white paper I'm like either this is the most genius idea in the world or it's the biggest ponzi scheme in the world and i i, I didn't know which one it was because 
Um, I used to know how to code a little bit. I, you know, when I was young, I used to code, but not. I was never, uh, like I say, a a professional, you know, programmer. So whatever I could analyze, I looked at it myself, and I couldn't um, figure out whether it was like a Trojan horse because you, had, you back then you had to download the exe file, the the, the, the miner, right? You, you download, you know, the Bitcoin client, and I was like, I don't want to download something on my computer. Uh, and have it like take yeah, the over. wallet and the mining software was actually just the same software. Yes, yes, yes. And it was a very simple. This is a simple executable file, exe file. So I gave it to my um, my our network administrator at the, the company that I was running, and he basically said he did he wasn't sure what it was either. And then he's like, you know, my recommendation is I don't know. It looks really cool. I don't know what it is. I would recommend you know don't download it. He's probably worried that if I did, then he'd get in big trouble. So I just followed his advice. I didn't do anything. And then I, I let it, you know, this is back then Bitcoin was worth like $3 a Bitcoin, right? And, um, but then, you know, every, it was an idea virus. Every, you know, week or two weeks or two weeks, I'd be like, oh, that's, that Bitcoin thing's interesting. I'd log in and check in the price and, and look at it and go into Bitcoin talk and read more about it. Within a year, I was like, this is actually real. Like if it was a real virus, then it, someone would have been hacked by then. Right. There's no way that um, uh, it was fake. So at this point, I was like, I was like, maybe you know he's wrong. Let me do my. And I started basically digging in more, and I was decently convinced that it wasn't. In those old days, when Bitcoin first came out, man, it didn't like you know when I found out about Bitcoin, there's probably less than you know. Uh, I remember there's less than like twenty thousand people that were like you know uh, that were actively involved in it, right? And so it, when I actually got it, actually started making my first purchase, it was you know sub hundred dollars, right? And I was convinced that it was real. I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in and actually buy some. Um, and some of my first coins, uh, uh, not uh, uh, you know, a lot of them, I was, I was at Mt. Gox. You know, I, I, I'm Mt. Gox creditor, <laughs> right? Uh, the other ones, um, uh, I bought on an exchange called BuySellBitco.in, which, as you know, is the, the embryonic version of ZPay um, it, it, from a guy named Mahindra. Yeah, it's the first exchange. Yeah. So it's for those of you who, who don't know, Mahin Gupta is one of the co-founders uh, at Zepay and started India's first, not only exchange, but literally India's first crypto company uh, way back in 2012. And it was called buysellbitco.in. And yeah. uh, Rahul, you were a customer yeah, yeah. there. I, I, was, I think we, we were one of the bigger customers. And so we were, we were buying. It's to happen. <laughs> yeah. And so what's what's so interesting is that, is that you know, we, we found out about Mahin and uh, uh, we bought some Bitcoin through him enjoyed the experience and then we hodl it and and the really big thing is you know uh uh bitcoin uh, like the, the intent was to never sell it. like i knew i i understood the, the idea that this was a an asset to hold it was just, it wasn't it wasn't a currency it was is it was a let's say a an asset more than than you could use it to set, buy and sell stuff but that was only to prove that you could do it uh uh and so um uh, went down to space bought bought some then tried to convince the family uh, when it was sub one hundred dollars, <laughs> put in like a million dollars in the Bitcoin, and they were like, "You don't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, we're not going to do it." All right, so good luck. You go go buy with your own money, which I did. And um, eventually, basically, like as as stuff happened, it became bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, uh, part of my attention, and I would spend more time on it. And um, uh, the simple answer is that. By 2000, you know, 14, 15, 16, realized that, that this is that the blockchain and Bitcoin and things like smart contracts were the were the biggest innovations of my life, and that I should dedicate pretty much most of my energy and time to it. Right. So, um, uh, kind of each successive year from that on, just went deeper, deeper down the rabbit hole. So yeah, I mean, you know, even before Zepe, you've been involved in other crypto projects and companies. So, so tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So, so. Um, yeah, so exactly. My, my my first foray was probably just the, the simple tokens. And when I, when I went in, I was like, you know, how can how can you invest into this space? And uh, I realized that, it, you know, I knew that Bitcoin was going to be big. And then, you know, very early on before Ether came out, I was trying to figure out, you know, what are the what are the next Bitcoins? And this is kind of like when Litecoin and, and a couple other ones were out. And I said, these are interesting, but like, you know, unless something's going to be vastly better or different. You know, I don't want to really um, uh, worry about that. I, I really do believe Bitcoin's the best coin, right? Uh, and, and, and like I said, we will get into that. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Tied to maybe your Facebook it, posts uh, are not uh, yeah. aligned with that view, but we'll get into that. And so, what ended up happening was, um, I said, if if I believe this, you know, uh, uh, if Bitcoin's the best asset in the world, and, I, and and you know, 
what should I, what else, how else can I invest in it? And I, I said, I want to invest into companies that, that basically make Bitcoin, right? And so it's kind of like mining companies or exchanges. And, um, uh, you know, kind of hustled our way into buying Coinbase stock, right? Sub, you know, billion dollar valuation. So it's up 100x, right? It's pretty amazing. Uh, uh, the the as, as your people who are watching this, it'll probably be public by the time you watch this video, but Coinbase is about to go public uh, in 10 days. Right, less than ten days. Yeah, on, they just announced their earnings yeah, yesterday, so I, we're able to buy. Fourteenth like April. Yeah, yeah. So and, and you've been one of the early investors in Coinbase, right? Yeah, yeah. So we bought we bought we bought shares. Uh, you know, 2016, 17, 18. I forget the exact the exact year. Off, you know, you know, from former employee employees who would want to sell a stock through, like, you know, a, 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 there's a company called you know Second Market and Forge. These are people where you can buy secondary shares, right? And so um, uh, we're very lucky to buy those shares pretty early, decently early. And I remember having a hard time convincing the family that, you know, Coinbase is worth a billion dollars. And I'm like, I'm like, and they're like, no, I was like, they're like, you know, is it really worth one fifth of E-Trade? And E-Trade is worth five billion. I was like, I was like, you don't, you don't get it. I was like, this is not, this is not like, it's not even a comparison. This is, this is way better and better company. And it has, it's, it's turned out E-Trade's probably gone from 5 billion to 10 billion market cap, while Coinbase has gone from 1 billion to over a hundred billion. All right. And so, um, uh, yeah, so Coinbase, Coinbase is the other thing. And the, and the other investments, you know, um, uh, as we've evolved, we've made multiple investments in space from DCG, uh, which is a uh, digital currency group, right, to various funds like Pantera and things like that, uh, to uh, we're investors in Brave Browser, uh, uh, which, I'm, which I'm using right now. Uh, and um, yeah, so, so like we, we, we invest across the space and by, by we, I mean, is our, let me give you a quick background. So I'm basically the, the, the CEO of ZPay, but also my title is chief investment office for Aon Capital and Aon, it's a, it's, it's our family office. Uh, we're mainly healthcare investors and that's kind of what, how, what, what piqued my interest in Bitcoin and blockchain. I was like, Hey, how can this technology can be used within health insurance? But what, what the family office invests in the thesis was we want to, kind of do a diversified bet across let's call it the blockchain space and so one was owning tokens and um i'll go ahead and, even though we'll talk about later my, my two favorite tokens are bitcoin and ether now that, that's like the portfolio there the second way is finding great managers finding companies who we think people who can manage companies and capital within within the space and this is companies like dcg even let's say things uh uh, uh like pantera and polychain and paradigm these are these are really good fund managers who, who understand the space right um and then the last way is you know the, the third is private equity as as family office investors we want to find companies to invest in not just managers of capital and that that, that stumbled into brave and then zedpay which 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 i'm now the ceo of and the idea here was can we invest in a business with, that also uh basically uh, uh gets you know uh, paid revenue in bitcoin yeah, and I, I think in Brave, I think you're more than just an investor, right? You're one of the biggest investors in, uh, yeah, in yeah, Brave. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we're actually one of the largest investors in Brave Browser. Um, Brave, I'm on the board there. Uh, uh, really, really excited about Brave. Uh, and um, they have a really cool token called the, the Basic Attention Token, the BAT token. Um, it's also uh, probably my third favorite coin after Bitcoin and Ether. And in fact, not third. It is my third favorite coin after Bitcoin and Ether. Um, really cool use of blockchain, which is um, uh, a unique way. It's trying, it's trying to using privacy and uh, it's a, a way of uh, almost like a loyalty point, like a reward point inside the browser. And the easy way to explain it, it's kind of like airline miles for browsing. And um, uh, so Brave is doing some really cool stuff. Um, uh, we're really pumped about it. The CEO is a phenomenal entrepreneur. His name is Brendan Ike. He actually invented JavaScript, which is the most widely used programming language in the world. And uh, also was a co-founder of Mozilla and Firefox, um, which, you know, uh, is a great, a great company as well. So, uh, but really excited about Brave and, and uh, uh, too, it's another great company. So which is the biggest crypto uh, project or company that you're involved in, uh, uh, in terms of money or in terms of yeah. mind space or stress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, um, uh, probably, I mean, it would be ZPay and Brave, but like, uh, Brave, uh, more of a, more of a board member, right? And so, um, ZPay is definitely one that I spend, you know, most of my time with. Uh, and that's the way where I'm an op the operational CEO, and uh, uh you know this because you 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 started the company. You're you're in it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and uh, I, we we actually do eat, sleep, you know, dream of 
of let's say crypto and blockchain and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So of course I want to talk a lot about Zepay, but before we jump into India and Zepay, yeah. since you live in the U.S., how's the crypto sentiment in the U.S. Uh, uh, turning out? Some massive yeah. amount of news coming out yeah, of sure. the U.S. So- uh, I mean, you know, I like to live in a country which is very has, has an open, you know, and financial system. Uh, it's democratic, and what's so interesting, you know, Bitcoin um, uh, is viewed, I think, decently favorable here, so, unlike uh, some other countries. Um, people are excited. Uh, uh, Coinbase is, like I said, is about to go public, and uh, I, was, I was reading some sort of news that that people estimate that that most Bitcoin is actually probably, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's probably owned by American investors, right? It'd be very interesting to actually go back and go, go see if, if that data is true. But um, uh, America, I say, is very pro-Bitcoin. People get it. it, it I do believe Bitcoin is almost it, it, like the ideas of, of American democracy 2.0, right? And it, like I talked about it as being freedom of money. Well, really, America's built on freedom. They say freedom of speech and freedom of press and freedom of religion. What Bitcoin does, it allows someone to vote with their time and money, right? So if you don't like, uh, you know, a currency, you can go, you should, you should be able to buy what you believe in, yeah, it's, you know, get the hardest money out there, which is Bitcoin. So um, uh, I, I would say the environment's decently strong and it's getting stronger. And I think it will get even, even stronger once Coinbase goes public. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Bitcoin is optional. It's not coercive, which is totally different than, you know, other monetary systems. And um, a lot of my friends, um, you know, they who are who don't follow the space, uh, you know, as a as a as a day job like we do, they are always concerned about the regulatory landscape, and they kind of feel like U.S. will lead the world. So if U.S. is pro cryptos and Bitcoin, then the rest of the countries will follow sooner or later. So it's always good to kind of know that at least U.S. is becoming more and more positive uh, with uh, this space. And I think the last year has been uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 it's been totally path breaking in the U S and especially with all the financial institutions coming in and with Coinbase's, uh, listing on 14th April, what do you think it's going to be the impact, uh, on, uh, you know, exchanges and even prices of cryptocurrencies? Do you think there's going to be any impact? Yeah. So, um, I was talking to a couple of, of influencers and say called Bitcoin OGs and like that. Is it, I, I know a couple people who are, who are, I know a good, a lot of people who are shareholders of Coinbase and I'm saying, Hey, what are you doing? Uh, some people, are, most people are holding on to, which is good because they, they believe the company's just minting money. The people who are taking it off, they're taking it off and they're basically buying Bitcoin. Right. And so um, that, that means that like, I think more capital goes into Bitcoin. Right. So whether you, you, the, the big question is this, the people buying Coinbase stock, are they selling Bitcoin to buy Coinbase stock? I think the answer is no. I think the people who are buying Coinbase stock have already fiat. They're using fiat money to buy Coinbase shares. Then the sellers of Coinbase stock are taking the Coinbase you know, shares that sold, the, the money to come in, and they're buying Bitcoin. So what ended up happening is I think it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a positive for Bitcoin. Um, uh, and yeah, the price, the price will very likely go up. You can't guarantee anything, but I think more money flows into Bitcoin. Yeah, I also feel that again, you know, because we follow the space and we think all the news that we read is about this space. I think once Coinbase's IPO, actually, when the, you know the, it starts uh, trading, I think it's going to be a lot in the news. And then it's again, it's you know this oh, it's kind of media you, uh, virtual cycle, you. and you know the most skeptical people are going to again be forced to look at Bitcoin. And I think it's a, absolutely a net positive uh, for the space. So uh, I believe that there will be a positive impact on the it's price huge. because we cannot it's guarantee. Huge. I think it's massive. It is. It is. It's not like more. a billion dollar IPO. It's a it's a seventy or a hundred no, billion it's, it's, it's dollar. Funny. It's more than that. I'm telling you, man. Listen, it's, it, like people are underestimating it. To show, give you an example, is that uh, uh, Coinbase made more revenue and profit in the last three months than they did in all of 2020, right? So they they made they made a billion dollars in profit in one quarter, right? Think about that. It's massive. And I think I think when it goes public. Uh, of course, you know, knock on wood, who knows, well north of 100 billion. I think it might be worth 150 billion, right? So, so just insane numbers, considering the amount of time that they've, you know, it's, 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 it's still relatively a new company. Um, I, and the uh, another interesting thing is that this kind of growth is happening. I mean, okay, we look at this growth over the last quarter, but they've been doing this kind of growth consistently since, and all exchanges are. So that, that's the amazing strength of this industry. Absolutely. 
so so how's the journey been so far as the owner and ceo of zeppe <laughs> yeah no totally yeah uh, it's been it's been a wild ride uh uh it's been fun and hard work uh uh so yeah, so the basic journey, you know, let's get into Zeppi. I I met Sonny at Consensus, which is um, the the Bitcoin conference in New York. And um, what ended up happening was I walked by, you know, the, the, his Zeppi co-founder Mahin Gupta, and I looked at it and I was I was like Mahin Gupta. I was like, I know Mahin Gupta. He 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 was like had he was running a company called Buy Sell Bitco In, right? I looked at it and I was, I was like, "Hey, are you are you that Mahin?" He's, and uh, then I told him how how you know we knew we knew him, and then that's how we both met. Um, and what ended up happening was that was you know uh, a couple years ago, kind of came on as a minority investor, and then and then took over the majority stake. Let's say January of 2020, like very 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 beginning of the year, uh, and. Uh, it's been a wild ride. Like, you know, I, 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 when you asked me, I, I've really had to put everything I, I've had into it. And, um, uh, not, but it's not just me. The whole team has done a phenomenal job. You built a, a great company and culture and team. And, um, uh, it was, it was during crypto winter that, that I took over, right? And it was, things are still pretty bleak back then. I mean, it's very, this is Bitcoin was sub, it was like five, six, seven thousand dollars right? If you think about that now, right? Now it's, it's hot. Is it 60,000, right? It's hard to imagine that time compared to the time that we are living in yeah, right now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> nobody would talk about Bitcoin. Nobody was interested in it. There was uh, absolutely it was, zilch. It was, um, uh, uh, you know, this is when the Indian government was talking about not just banning it, but criminalizing it, right? And there are so many factors on what to do. And, and what, what really, you know, let me tell you, explain the views, like why I decided to do this. So, um. After that first foray into Bitcoin, as my love for it had grown, I realized that this is what I want to spend my life on. Like, like literally, uh, I was dedicated. This is my life mission, right? And I said, you know, uh, uh, I didn't know where Zeppe was going to go. Let's say if, if, if we'd gone to someone else or had been shut down, it's just been a really big blow to the, the industry. I was like, you know what? I, I love this company. I love what you had built. And I was like, I'm going to take it on. And uh, basically, I'm going to go to the death. With me, in the sense that until I can't, work on it anymore i'm gonna try doing it and so uh went all in the, i remember you literally saying that yeah it, 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 because I, I felt like you really made a good point you know two-thirds of all indians fought, bought their first bitcoin through zenpay right this is you know we were the first exchange right and, and that but what's really cool is, is like all businesses you have to innovate or die right like just because Mount Gox used to have ninety percent market share doesn't mean you know uh it's gonna have ninety percent market share now that's, really, that's a respectful thing about coinbase coinbase ups their game and gets better and better and better right and so um i knew that it was it was we'd have to restart stuff we'd have to rebuild trust and that's really what it's been about like it, 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 the past year has been like you know restarting the engine and and, and getting and now we have a, a bunch of cool stuff happening but the past year has been a lot of let's say hard work but love and uh uh like you know like i'm in the ring you know uh, it's not easy running a company of the size and scale but like it's fun because if you're working with people who, who also love and are passionate about what you do then that's probably the, the the most fun thing in life is that it really is working with people who you want to interact with and and working on something which is fun to build so um uh, but it's been a phenomenal experience and um uh, uh really excited to build it more right so Zeppe is the biggest exchange in India with, uh, I think, about 4 million users. What do you think of the current competition with other exchanges like Vazirx, Unocoin, CoinDCX? Some of them, uh, you know, since Zeppe's oh, time oh, and yeah. some of them... Uh, yeah, well, maybe it's about Wazirx. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm friendly with Nishal. Uh, I just texted him this morning. Um, uh, Wazirx, uh, when Zeppe, when we invested, Zeppe was the number one exchange, had vast, had a huge, huge market share. Um, and uh, Unicoin... Uh, was kind of like a little bit earlier and Zeppe came in. I think my personal opinion is that there's always like, you know, some sort of, you know, it, it doesn't matter. No one's ever be number one always, right? Whether you're, uh, uh, it's like a sports team, right? So if, if, if you're, the, if you're the Bulls, then the Celtics come, right? If you're, if you're the Lakers, then, then someone else comes. So, and what ends up happening is you have to constantly be on top of your game to win. And that's what you have to do. I mean, and it's going to happen because, not just because of net, you know, say network effects, but because of great customer experience, doing innovation like exchange tokens, uh, things like that. So um, uh, we're now, I'd say, probably the second biggest. You know, Wazirx is definitely number one. 
uh, Coin DCX is there, but I think we're bigger than them. You know, by we have a different business model. We're not like an aggregator, right? This Coin Switch, which is also doing a pretty good job, uh, Unicoin is also doing well, but I, I think we're, we're significantly larger than them. So, um, and in fact, the biggest exchange, to be, let's be honest, the biggest Bitcoin exchange in India is Binance, right? Uh, 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 Binance is the biggest exchange, just like they're the biggest exchange globally, right? And so, um, what, what what what's up happening is uh, the 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 cool thing about let's say the Indian market is um, uh, one uh, uh, because we we do have like say a home court advantage there, you know we're, we're trying to innovate based upon like you know regional differences, but the other factor is that um, uh, you know our customers they expect like the best right because they can go to Binance or Coinbase or whoever right or Kraken doesn't really matter meaning that if our product is not as good as them you know. It's not easy. It's very easy for them just to like you know download another app from the app store and get it. So that's what we're doing right now. What I'm focusing on right now is really upping our product experience and our and our customer service. And it's not it's not it's not that simple, right? I know as as a Coinbase investor and a user, it's hard, especially during these, these boom times when things go like this, getting enough people to service. Yeah. Yeah, totally. As exchange volumes, uh, you know, they increase dramatically in a short time. And you just don't know when that timing is going to happen. You you always you, you always anticipate a price cycle. You don't know when and you cannot prepare. And it really puts like massive strain on operations. And most people outside don't realize that it's an exponential increase that happens really rapidly compared to other, uh, you know, industries, uh, even like e-commerce. And it's, um, I, I think it's just impossible uh, or very difficult, if not impossible to prepare for the surge. And oh. I know Vazirx website, I think crashed a couple of days back. Or, 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 and I think again, yesterday they put it, put out a tweet that they are again facing some technical difficulties. So yeah. are you facing similar challenges and are you doing oh, something to so, kind of so, to stay on um, top of the game? Yeah. So, you know, same things. A lot of times during, during market volatility, we get DDoS attacked. Uh, 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 people know they do a lot of some arbitrage. I mean, uh, we do our best, but like you know, um, uh, all exchanges have issues. Whether whether you're, even if you're Binance or Coinbase, the big boys, right? So um, uh, I know what happened with Wazirx that when their token really you know uh, mooned up a lot, like they got a lot of traffic, you know, and so. Um, but as as do ours, like you know, we we you know we we've, we've done eighty, ninety, hundred million dollars in volume in one day, right? So uh, uh, we're doing about maybe about fifty or sixty, uh, you know. Um, uh, between between thirty and sixty, it kind of depends on weekend and weekdays, things like that. But like um, uh, these are volumes which Coinbase was doing two years ago, right? It's pretty pretty amazing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and it's, it is it's, insane. It's gonna build and go up, and, and my viewpoint is is Bitcoin's gonna eat the world, right? The the people and people, you know, some people are trading, but there's a lot of people who just buy and they hodl it. That's it, you know. Yeah, I'm hold on to it. Totally. Well, I, I'd like to say that Bitcoin is gonna save the world. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I believe it, uh, yeah, I'm a believer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, and on those volumes, you know, in, in Mint, uh, which is a pretty uh, famous uh, financial uh, newspaper in India, you mentioned that Zepe expects to do a volume of 25 billion, and that's a B uh, dollars in 2021. And for many in traditional finance and even in fintech, these are eye-popping, jaw-dropping numbers. I know this is possible, but what do you say to the skeptics? Oh, uh, it's happening right now. So, so you know, we're we're averaging you know a billion dollars in revenue, billion dollars of volume a month right now already, right? And so, um, to do twenty five billion annualized, like, you know, it's two billion dollars per month. And so, uh, 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 you know, we're we're clear on it. We're we're, we're, on, we're you know we're halfway there. Like you, you know, we're already we're already there. And so, um, what ends up happening is that as more and more people are entering the market. The demand goes higher, and as 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 more and more people like actually start uh, get FOMO for missing out the price, the volatility increases and things like that. So, um, a lot of skeptics. I mean, I, I see where you know, like I said, like for the, I, I look at them. I, I'm not too worried about them. I look at them when I first found out about Bitcoin, like the very the very first year. You know, they're skeptical. So what what you have to do is you have to kind of like, hey, listen, yeah, I think you have to go with them at, at that that. Hey, listen, I was skeptical once too. Just, just, just do your own research and study it. So, right. I think it's the right, absolutely the right point in the conversation to show off your T-shirt. Oh yeah, this is this, <laughs> yeah, this is you know, I, I, I a Cody spoke about Bitcoin, right? And, and so I, I, I've, I've been talking about this stuff like you know for for years. 
my my wife uh, we used to have a bitcoin miner in my house a couple of them right and and you know friends would come over and i'd be like hey what is that and then she'd be, she'd be like roll her eyes oh man don't don't, don't bring up bitcoin and um man it, it's it's playing out like like, like i expected and the, let's talk about the, the price like you know bitcoin was a hundred bucks when i invested you know where man you know what i'll give you my price chart ready bitcoin is worth bitcoin is priceless it's infinite okay that's amazing that's beautiful it, it, you, you know, people don't understand that. Like, if, listen, the the it's the best asset in the world, right? And uh, we, imagine the Mona Lisa and you know the, the the David. Imagine all art put together. You you can't you can't you can't value it. It's the first real digital work of art, right? Um, and uh, uh, now, what does, what does that mean for it? So it means that, like, listen, you know, if you had to pick one asset in the world to put into, it's probably that. Right. Um, uh, and then my big exception right under it is Ether. Right. And they go, oh, I don't get it. Why is it you're saying it's, it's they're, they're different. It's like one is I've, I've mentioned this analogy. I look at Bitcoin not as digital gold. I look at it as digital hydrogen. It's the very first element. And what I look at what I look at Ether as is Ether is like oxygen. It's like it's like a, it's like a different element. But uh, um, and now now you're saying is like, what does that mean? But what, now the really cool stuff. What I'm really interested in is we take hydrogen and oxygen together. You can make water, and then water to me is, is smart contracts. You can build co- really cool stuff with smart contracts, and then, then from there you, you can start. It, this is the, the the gateway into AI, right? Into a new type of technology, to scalable, into abundance. It, like that's what I'm saying. It really it really does open the door to let's say the, the new world, right? Yeah, and see, that's the that's the amazing uh, kind of uh, relationship I have with you or I feel about you. You start saying these amazing things about Bitcoin and I'm like, ama- like I- I'm like drum roll. And then you start talking about Ethereum and I'm like, damn, like I just, <laughs> but that's amazing. Uh, no, I, I, I totally get you. And I love these discussions that we have. And I'll, I, 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 th- I think many people do not know sometimes the teams or the founders behind these companies. And I, 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 and I, I hope that people can figure out the passion. Uh, you, you're doing Zeppe for passion, and I, you know this is what this is about. And I hope that comes out in this conversation. So, Rahul, there's a massive institutional interest in Bitcoin uh, in the US and even in other countries. Uh, you know, uh, there's news coming out uh, almost every week. There is this, this some large institution giving a shout out to uh, Bitcoin. Are you seeing institutional family office interest in India, or uh, is it still lagging? No, absolutely. So we have a, we have a, an OTC business, uh, a kind of high net worth OTC business, and absolute positivity. There's a lot of uh, uh, family offices. Uh, uh, they're interested. It's really interesting because you know I said we we run I run our family office, and you know it's it's a it's you know a, a, a several billion dollars of capital uh, for Aon Capital and. Um, uh, we've been investing in space for a while. What's really cool is we 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 talk to other family offices in the space, and um, it's, it's about the first the U.S. side. They are have been very interested for a while in getting more interested. And same on the Indian side, a lot of Indian family offices are are, have, are, are not just interested; they're investing in the space. They're investing both locally, and they're they're looking they're looking at invest using different you know let's say like LRS and different remittance schemes things like that. And um, uh, we're helping out multiple ways. And, and they're, they're also talking about, hey, you know, what I, what I think about, you know, GBTC, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, and about Tesla stock, all of the above. Yeah, yeah which are almost like proxy investments, but finally into Bitcoin. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. And what do they, what are they feeling about? Or what, what are you feeling about the current regulatory landscape in India? Do you think that Bitcoin cryptocurrencies are going to be banned in India like the media is reporting? No, I I think that's that's fud. So my personal viewpoint on it is, and listen, I don't have any special insight into the, into the prime minister's you know mind or agenda, but um, I think that it's gonna be very hard to ban Bitcoin. There's a lot of people who uh, uh, are worried about, it, but what's in India is a large democracy. It, it you know things generally work out in the long run. Is they might get more strict on regulation, but that's actually a good thing. I, I believe. I think. As more regulation comes in, there's a lot of people on the sideline who are waiting for that. And then once regulation comes in, they're going to enter the market, right? So I, I don't think there's going to be a ban. 
I think uh, very likely over the next several years, uh, regulation will become a little bit more strict. You will have to comply with all laws, like FAMA laws. Like the, the Bitcoin in India has to stay in India, things like that, right? And the strict KYC and strict you know, uh, 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 money laundering issues and strict, let's say, capital requirements, things like that. And so um, uh, I'm very hopeful and believe Bitcoin is here to stay. And if you go look at the market itself, when companies like Tesla buy Bitcoin, like, uh, you know, Tesla wants to produce cars in India, right? So does that mean uh, if you're driving around a Tesla and may, maybe there's some, they have some sort of you know Bitcoin wallet built into the car, it, it, you know, can you stop that? No, you're not going to stop that. It's going to be built into the car, right? So, yeah, I, I totally feel that the media reporting on uh, India banning Bitcoin is fud, and I also feel that the, the even the sources of that information are questionable, and it's just the headlines get kind of repeat it. And because people read it in 10 newspapers or, uh, you know, websites, uh, it starts feeling like it's the truth, but it's it's, it's absolutely not it, the it, case. I'll tell you my viewpoint on this, honestly, now after being, you know, now the CEO for, uh, you know, a, a year, let's say 15 months. Um, and is it a lot of, I think, I think there's, there's various people, you know, it's not fake news. People want to, are worried about if the speculation gets too big, right? And, someone's feeding something hey, and slow this down right this is the tail wagging the dog right and uh but what's funny is you know as soon as you do that then then elon musk buys and then you know this this endowment buys and that institution buys and i'll tell you you, you know you, you asked you about family offices we have we have companies that, in india that are interested in buying bitcoin right there they really are we're not, we can't name them yet but there's a lot of companies that are interested in, in bitcoin there's a lot of family offices and on the u.s side every single day a new endowment university endowment or a financial institution buys right and it, we're already in the path and, and, yeah and they have billions of dollars in AUM, which is totally different than a retail investor yeah absolute positivity yeah. totally yeah so nfts are the rage right now uh and i remember you talking about a zeppe nft even before the current rage has started you have <laughs> you know this uncanny i limit myself to bitcoin but you're always trying to predict the future and you're well i have to give it to you and Wazirx recently launched uh, NFT marketplaces. Zeppe plan to do anything in yeah, this space? Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, we we have a uh, we actually we, we announced it. We haven't launched it yet. We, we've been working on this really cool project called the Dazzle project. And Dazzle, for for people to understand, Dazzle is a it's it's a herd of zebras. I don't know if you knew that. If you take a herd of zebras, the name is a Dazzle. That's right. amazing. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, and so we're, we're calling it Dazzle. It's 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 an NFT marketplace. And um, what's really cool is. Uh, we haven't launched it yet, but we are, instead of doing an exchange token, we're making a Zebra token. And what a Zebra token is, it's not a, a what you think of, like, say, a BNB or, or WRX or, let's say, an FTX token. It's an NFT. And it's a non-fungible exchange token. And what, what we mean by this is each token is unique, but the difference is, is that some of them will give you, let's say, 100% off fees, and some of them will give you 5% or 10% or 20 a gradient, a complete gradient of fees. Right, and it's based upon like how rare or unique it is. And uh, for example, you you know who's going to get the most valuable token is you. We're going to give one to you and Sarab and Mahin. So like you'll have this token, and it'll just automatically know that you get not only do you get you get you get to use Zepay for free, you're going to get dividends back, things like that. So you're going you're going to get benefits back, like re rewards and loyalty points. And what an NFT? The reason why you know how is what is an NFT? An NFT, you know. Obviously, you can say it's, it's a non-fungible token, but what the, what the heck does that mean? What what is it? Each zebra is different. Like in Bitcoin, every Bitcoin is worth another Bitcoin. And what we want to do is we want to make we want to reward people. And the more you do, the better your token gets. Right? Wow, that's an evolution of a token. It's like different kinds of membership. If you're a platinum member, then you get different services, and you're doing that within the same kind of token name and concept. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really interesting. Exactly. So that's all it is. And uh, we work, we, we, we've already got, we're already got special partners. Kind of like the, we, we call it earn your stripes. The more stripes you have, the, 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 better, the better your zebra is. And then, uh, you know, the more valuable your token is. Yeah. I was saying, I was saying it, it, the token's yours. You can sell it if you want to. So, you know, you, you'll have a priceless, in a sense, priceless. It would be a really cool work, work of art. But like that zebra that you own basically gives you full access, like, like you know, to like the first class lounge of Zepic, right? And I remember you talking about it absolutely before the current NFT rage. Oh, yeah, and I have like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. When is it coming? It's a little complex because 
this is like BNB before BNB that is we want to make sure that the token economics are proper and how everything all connects, right? Because if you just make one zebra token and they're all the same, great. But what happens is you're, you're, you're making them evolve and there's different gradients and stuff like that. Yeah, you also need to make sure the economics are, are proper so that people can people can can make everything work. So we'll, we'll be launching it very soon in the next, next couple months. And so not only does it give you access to our NFT marketplace, it gives you access to all of what ZPay does. So I'm assuming this is a sunny Bitcoin special announcement. No, yeah, yeah, no, you, 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 uh, absolute positive. We haven't really announced it yet, yet but like, uh, but you, you are. Uh, we decided to go ahead and, and you know uh, uh, let in some secrets. So like, like I, if people are wondering about timeline. Um, uh, like I said, it's a little complex making this NFT, right? Because we, we, it's an NFT with with you know unlimited variability, right? Like it's called you know trillions of dollars, trillions of ways of, of combining this stuff. And so, um, but we expect to have like uh, basic working of this stuff in the next uh, month and a half to two months. And then it'll be fully decentralized and on chain within probably mid or end of the year. Because it, it, like once you own it, you really move, move your Zebra token, uh, you know, onto, onto a smart contract system. Like whether it's, it's Binance Smart Chain or the Ethereum blockchain, it, it, would, it would live there. So you don't think NFT is a fad uh, riding the bull uh, cycle like all coins did in 2017? I think I think NFTs uh, um, uh, it, it, it is it is a little uh, uh, let's say a boom market right now. But does that mean um, most markets like this uh, there is some value, and then uh, there's a lot of let's say you know clouds and dust and you know fake stuff out there. So I'll give you an example. The reason why the zebra token is has value, it's an NFT, is not because it, it's art, right? It's because it has utility, right? And in the same way, so so when someone's buying an image of something, like you know, th- that doesn't mean anything. It means unless you're getting you know royalty on that, like licensing, if you're getting an income stream off that, then it's worth something. And so um, I would say it's you know it's half you know, fake and half real, but what, what, like, like, let's use that example. Let's talk about, you know, Bitcoin and then ether and then these the NFTs. When Bitcoin first came out, like it, it, it people weren't sure it was real or not. So, but it is real now. It's, 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 it, 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 it's proven that it's a store of value. When ether came out, like ether's like, oh, that's just a, a, a clone of Bitcoin. Right. And people would say it's not real. Right. But, but everyone, people, if you try to deep, it's, real, it's not a clone of Bitcoin. It's kind of like, I, I look at ether as Bitcoin 2.0. It's a different, I actually, when I, when, I, when I love Bitcoin, what I love about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin has not changed, right? It really is that store of value. It's, you know, uh, censorship resistant, but not just that. Like, it, it's, it's like when you make something beautiful and priceless, don't, don't, don't F with it. Don't mess with it, right? It, it's amazing. What the Ether is, that you know what? We want to kind of, it's kind of like an upgraded version of Bitcoin, but it's a different path. And they, they, their viewpoint is, we want to be able to kind of mess with things. So it's a little bit riskier, a little bit different. It's not really a store of value. It's a different purpose for it. And then, then you go around the NFTs. Like, what is it? So there's a big boom bust then. In sense. And same with NFTs. What are NFTs? Well, everyone's like, oh, this is really cool. I can have a unique token. There's a lot of people doing, you know, really dumb stuff. Like, I can NFT anything. Like, you know, uh, 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 it could be my, my shirt, right? And, but like, it's not, not, that's not bad. If, you, if you're building utility to it, then it'll work. So give it some time and it will. What's happening with the industry association uh, that Zeppi took the lead to start? It's called the Blockchain and Cryptocurrency Committee, BACC. Are crypto exchanges coming together, doing something for government advocacy? Yeah, sure. So the, the, we're a big believer in, let's say, you know, positive regulation is a good thing. So we're, what we want to do is we want to work with other exchanges in, in many ways to get, let's say, really good international standards on how, we, how an exchange should run. And the, these are say top tier chains like Gemini and Coinbase and let's say the monetary authority of Singapore where you are, it has really good rules on how to run an exchange. And so uh, if we believe that if we, we, if we bring in the best actors and we all work together and we talk to, let's say the, the industry, both the SEBI and RBI and things like that, uh, uh, we can educate them. Cause that's the whole thing. A lot of people, a lot of regulators don't really understand what it is. So, um, uh, and we also, at least when I came on to ZPay, became a CEO, we have a very collaborative culture. We want to be very open and uh, uh, work with other exchanges. Like I said, you know, the, the best way to do this is, you know, no one company is going to solve this by themselves, right? You have to kind of go with it in, in a, uh, let's say, group setting. 
Yeah, and I totally, um, you know, just to tell the audience, uh, Zepay has been one of the companies which has allowed competitors to attend the board meeting, which yeah. is just absolutely insane. And that's Rahul's initiative of radical, I mean, radical transparency. So these are not just words by him. He actually f- believes in it, executes it. Uh, and sometimes uh, there are team members in Zepay who are... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We're so, going a bit crazy, but Raul is like, I don't care. This is out of passion. This is, you know, so I, I, so I know I, what I, he's saying. A great quote. There's a, there's a really good Netflix quote about this. So Netflix, when it started, um, they're like, you know, he, Reed Hastings, the CEO said, we're trying to become HBO faster than they're trying to become us. And what I was like producing original content and making great movies. I, I, like I said, the best asset in the world is Bitcoin. And we I actually look at Zepay as being kind of like you know the son of Bitcoin, like or you know like it's it's derived from Bitcoin, and so we want to become Bitcoin faster than Bitcoin puts us out of business, right? And so what I mean by that is we want radical transparency. We, we almost want to run like an open source company, and what we're doing we haven't we haven't launched this yet, but uh, we're 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 redoing our our not just our our culture, but even the idea of how we 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 were owned, right? Uh, there's some complexities here, but what we want to do is we want our ownership to be almost like if you own Bitcoin, you have economic interest in Zepay, right? And the reason why this radical transparency is important is that the the best exchanges in the world are the ones which are which are open to uh, uh, which are very open about how they run. There's one one really good reason why Coinbase is going public, and one one great reason why Binance does with their with their their BNB and their burns. So we want to emulate that and uh, uh, let. I mean, we don't want to. We don't want to hurt ourselves. We're not. We're not trying to like walk around naked. But we want to be able to um, uh, uh, prove to our customers and our members that listen. That hey, you trust us with your funds. We we want to trust you with giving you information that you should know about us. Yeah, these these seem like uh, to some listeners might seem like radical thoughts. But Raul has a capacity. Uh, to execute this and i've seen that in the past and you will see that in the future with zeppe so you you keep talking about bitcoin as the, your favorite asset but then on facebook you post every day that you purchased one eth and the price but you never post uh, that about bitcoin so, so what's no, the no, deal no, no. I, I do i do every once in a while I, I, but like you know it's probably about you know one out of a hundred days versus you know all days um uh no yeah so i've been buying one ether every single day for 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 over like two years uh, but then the price got too expensive. Uh, I, I stopped in middle of February uh, uh, doing it, um, and and now I've been buying point one because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know it's a number that I can afford. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so what uh, uh, what ended up happening? You know, why don't I buy Bitcoin? And the big the, it, it happened. It, it, you know, when I started buying one ether a day, it was a hundred dollars. It was one hundred and thirty dollars an ether, right? And I was like, oh, I can buy this. I can I can afford about you know thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a day. And um, the reason why I don't buy Bitcoin is um, I wanted to kind of like show that, that, uh, uh, that you know, it, to the max, if you could stretch to make it happen. Like, I wish I could have rewinded back to my life and bought Bitcoin back when it was five bucks, right? If I just bought $5 and then $7 and then $10 and, uh, you know, 100 and then 1,000. Now Bitcoin's at 60,000. Imagine buying one Bitcoin a day now. It's like impossible. And so, um, uh, it, it, the, the I'll, I'll tell you my ideal portfolio, and, and you'll like it. You'll half like it. The, the the best portfolio in the world is fifty percent Bitcoin, fifty percent Ether. And the reason why I say that is um, one, I think both are phenomenal currencies. But what people are forgetting is uh, Bitcoin's wild. If, if if you go look at where Bitcoin's biggest market, it's not it's not the dollar, it's not the rupee. It's not even USDT, it's Ether. Meaning the biggest thing you can exchange your Bitcoin for is Ether. And so what it's gonna end up happening, I believe in the long run, the largest liquid exchange pair in the world is Bitcoin ETH, right? In many ways, the reason why I say that is that uh, uh, a lot of people think, oh, you know, what's gonna be the biggest pair is gonna be you know, Bitcoin, USD. No, man, you, the dollar's dead. Right, the dollar is it, it, just a, it's just a, it's like a, it's, a, it's an old school measurement. So when you go to the future, what 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 are the, what is the currency pair that you're going with? And and Bitcoin is a winner, but like you know, and you, that means you can transact in Bitcoin, right? You, you know, uh, uh, you can buy stuff, but you know, but the other big pair I think is ETH. You're right. I do like half of your portfolio, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. 
<laughs> so it. what what do you think about the current bitcoin price do you think it's um, hovering near all time highs uh, uh, do you think it's to- at the top of the current price cycle or is it has a long way to still go um uh, i think you know we're we're we we hit the a, 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 the big jump of it but I, I think like my viewpoint on on these cycles is that one they get they get longer and then then more people get in them so um i think the cycle is going to go maybe maybe a year or two uh, maybe from now right uh and i think we we'll, if you if you just ask me i think we, I, I, just, I do a very simple thing i just do a 10x right so you take the last big price is twenty thousand dollars. I think we go to two hundred thousand dollars, right? So what I think ended up happening is we probably, you know, what, I'll give you the price that I saw. Like you know, Bitcoin was around three dollars when I got in, right? When I heard about it, it went three to th- th- thirty bucks, then back down to ten. Went from ten to a hundred, right? Then back down to fifty. Went from fifty to a thousand, then back to like two hundred or three hundred, right? And then so every t- every big time it kind of jumps ten x from kind of like the, the last peak. And to me, the last peak was twenty thousand, so it, I, I think it'll go to two hundred thousand dollars, or or more, or more. Right. Yeah, I've been talking about, or at least been reading research that maybe there's a possibility that this is Bitcoin's first super cycle. In which case, it of course it'll, it'll keep going up, uh, you know, at least from our thesis. But it might not experience the kind of uh, volatile drawdowns. That have happened in the past, but yeah, no, of course, nobody can no, say. I, it's I, 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 my, I've been talking I, I, about. I love your research. Uh, 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 I, I've been I've been reading it. I agree fully. Like, I think that that we are a super cycle. Um, let's just talk about the honesty. Are, are you selling your Bitcoin? No. Am I selling my Bitcoin? No. It, 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 let's talk about something else fun. Um, and and you know, very few few people know this, but the largest you know corporate owners of Bitcoin in the world are like GBTC. Grayscale, uh, 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 MicroStrategy, uh, uh, Tesla, and you know who also owns some Bitcoin? Coinbase and ZPay. Yeah. We keep our balance sheet in Bitcoin, Bitcoin and ETH. That's it. Yeah, before the micro strategies and the Teslas of the yeah, world. Yeah, <laughs> I've been doing it since. Since uh, 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 what happened was, I'd say the one change that happened is is our balance sheet was in Bitcoin when 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 you know Sunny and the founder. The only thing that changed, I, I kind of added some more ETH, but it's been it's it's in Bitcoin and ETH. That's it. Right, so we we love Bitcoin and and we're we're adding Bitcoin every single day, right? Well, on that note, uh, you know, before we wrap up, Rahul, how can people find you, follow you, or follow Zepay? Sure, sure. So uh, uh, on Zepay, we're just at Zepay on Twitter. Uh, for me, like I said, you, you'll you'll uh, you'll half like it. Uh, I have my my Twitter handle is at uh, eth eth underscore us. Uh, um, you know, I, I, all the Bitcoin ones are taken, man. You, you took them all. I couldn't find <laughs> Bitcoin, Rahul. Uh, and so, that is just um, unforgivable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I don't, I don't even know why I had Ethos. I think, I think I knew I was buying, you know, you know, Ether back in the old days. And so, um, just you can you go on to Google, just Google Rahul, and then and then Pugety Pati or Rahul Zedpay, you you can find out more about me. Rahul, um, I know just like me, uh, this industry is a passion for you, and it's not just about the money. You are the billionaire who wakes up at 3 a.m. for Zeppe board meetings. <laughs> and I remember you just like you mentioned that, you know, you're ready to pay any price, like literally any price to ensure that Bitcoin and crypto not only survives, but thrives in India. And I want to thank you and really salute you for your passion and for hanging in there and for keeping Zeppe and uh, Bitcoin's torch uh, burning in India. I know what a tough job that is. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for coming Johnny. on Sunny Bitcoin. Thank you. I, 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 I want to thank you for starting ZPay. It's been like the the right of my life. I I honestly I do love it. Uh, I I am super passionate. About it. And like I said, like my goal is to get just like you to get Bitcoin into the hands of every single Indian, right? And uh, me and the the 140 employees now at ZPay, we're not we're not stopping until we make that happen. And uh, uh, I, I'm glad to have taken the torch from you and. We're going to try to take it, you know, as far as we can. Like we, we literally want to take it until until everyone in India, the, the one point is that, you know, eventually 5 billion people, it, 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 we're going to make Bitcoin pretty much synonymous uh, uh, with ZPay yeah, in India. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember in December 2017, and this was a really proud moment, ZPay was the most 
search term on the both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, and Bitcoin was like ninth or tenth. So we were synonymous, and uh, you know, gives me goosebumps to hear you uh, saying that. So thank you I so much. Oh, thank, thanks, Sunny. We're really excited, man. Hey, and and would would love to, to, to come back, and and you know, we, we got to hang again soon. <laughs>